Yo, oh, what's up guys? It's your boy Pikmin and May. We're back with another one. Let's get into it guys. We're going to talk about the best bets for UFC 3 or 2. We got a big pay-per-view coming up this weekend and I cannot wait to get to it. We're going to we're going to do a fight companion for this stuff. We do a fight companion for every UFC card out there. So make sure you guys come hang out with your boy this weekend, this Saturday. I'll be live for the full card. Um for the full card, I mean from early prelims from the first fight on. The first fight is probably going to be I think it's going to be Andre Lima taking on uh a Mitchell Postal, to the, we're gonna be on. We're gonna be live from the first fight till like the main event, Islam versus uh, Dustin Poirier. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great card, man. I can't wait to get into it. I can't wait for it. I mean, we only got a couple of days. We only got like three days to go. I mean, four, two day, two more days, two more nights. I mean, I mean three more nights. I mean, depending on where you live. So let's let's get into it, guys. Before we get into the best bets for the lock of the week and the prop of the week for UFC uh, three or two. We're going to do a quick recap, man. Let's do, we always do a quick recap, no matter how we do on picks, how we do on the best bets. I always do a quick recap. I mean, that's important just so you guys know how we did last week. I know some people out there don't really care about recaps, but I think recaps are really important. Let's do a recap for last week now, guys. So, uh, last week was okay. I mean, it was good for us. I mean, overall, we had the lock the week, um, um, the rainbow. Everyone was betting against my lock the week. I mean, most people out there were betting uh, the other side. Uh, Mitch, uh, Hermes Brahimas. I mean, what the hell has Brahimas even done? He's pretty fucking dog shit. I think Brahima sucks, man. And that's why I picked Grimbo as a lock. I was only worried about maybe Brahima catching him in a submission early. Like, that was, that was his best opportunity to get a win. And the guy just couldn't break away from the clinch. I mean, that fight was pretty boring. But I'm happy the lock that we came through for us. Um, that was one of my money line bets that I made last week, and um, I only had two money line bets last week. If you guys, um, I always post my like bets, the recaps, and everything on the community post. But if you guys um, seen, I only had two bets last week. One of them was Grimbo money line, because I wasn't probably not gonna bet him at minus two fifty, minus two hundred where the lines open up. But at minus one thirty five, I mean that was a great lock. Cause there's some big time favorites on the card. I mean, it was a mostly chalky card, but I wanted to give you guys a lock that I was confident in, and the line wasn't too crazy about it. It was either Green Boy, it was either, either gonna be Angela Hill. So, Angela Hill, let's talk about Angela Hill, man. She's one of our best bats last week. I told you guys, even at 39 years old, I mean, she's gonna have the way better cardio, way better, be more experienced in MMA in the UFC. I mean, overall fighting the way better competition. And uh, Angela Hill got her first submission in the UFC, man. I'm happy for Angela Hill. She got the first submission, her first ever submission uh, win in the UFC. I mean, so I'm happy for her. Like, I wish I called the submission. That I think that was like plus 2,500. Angela Hill via submission. That was crazy. We called, uh, we went 3 and 1 on best bets. So not terrible for best bets. Obviously, I want to go 4 and 1 best bets, but that's pretty hard. I mean, it's MMA. You never know. Abu's, I mean, Abu just couldn't get the finish. I mean, that was, that was kind of frustrating. Abu's not being able to get the finish out there, man. Like, come on. How do you not get a finish out there, Abu? So, like, he just wrestled um, worldly for three rounds. It was pretty boring. And um, I get it. If you guys, like, had Abu's in a parlay, you're probably happy with that win. But uh, I was really hoping he was going to go out there and get a finish. I mean, we got this line at, like, plus money. Was, I mean, when, when the line closed, it was, like, not even plus money when Abu's by TKO. So, a lot of people were on the TKO, just, not just me. We called under one and a half in that side versus Toko's fight. I told you guys that fight's not going to go over one and a half round. I mean, Toko's on short notice. Toko's even on full camp doesn't hardly ever goes past the first round. And Toko's on short notice. I mean, he got subbed in the first round. So, um, I'm happy for Sai, man. Sai out there um, in his debut got a first on submission. I mean, good for Sai getting that first on submission. Um, we called under one and a half rounds in the Nolan, uh, Tom Nolan versus Martinez, Victor Martinez fight at minus 150. Now, this fight, I mean, the first round was kind of close. The reason I didn't take uh, Nolan by, like, KO or something, which was, like, minus, I think it was, like, minus 200, Nolan by KO. And um, Nolan by first round KO was, like, I think it was, like, minus 110. So, like, you weren't really getting that much juice. I was, like, I'm, you might as well take the under one and a half rounds because it's going to cover both sides, right? And what do you know? I mean, Nolan gets knocked on by Martinez. I mean, Nolan has a glass chin. I mean, this guy has no fucking chin. I mean, holy shit. How do you get knocked on by a guy who's like 5'6 at fighting at lightweight? Unbelievable, man. So that's why we took the under one half rounds. Because I just don't trust a guy like Nolan. He should maybe move up to welterweight. Because I feel like the weight cut might be making a chin worse than it already is. Um, so hopefully like he uh, moves up to like welterweight and maybe chin looks better at welterweight. So anyways, I mean, I'm happy with last week. The last week calls were pretty good. The bets were like, we still in positive. We didn't make a lot of money last week in betting. 
we made like sixty seven seven dollars on the um, on the card. I think it was like 15, 15, 20 percent ROI, something like that. We cast a big parlay on Bellator and um, and uh, LFA last week. So overall, we had like on the weekend we had like six point five units on the weekend. We made back like um, we made back two point six two point seven units. So almost like fifty percent ROI last week. So I'm pretty happy with last week. Um, you guys know I'm a pretty safe better. I don't place. I don't go crazy on cards anymore like I used to. I've lost money betting like that in the past, so I just I just try to be safe. I try to pick my spots carefully because the long run, that's where you're gonna. I mean, you might make a lot of money betting on one card with like a lot of spots. You might you can do like ten parlays on the card and make like a ton of money. I guess you can do that, but um, I, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to betting on my own. So let's talk about uh, UFC 32, guys. We, we got a big pay per view coming paper record coming up this week and let's get into it guys let's talk about the lock of the week for UFC 3 or 2 it's gonna be Sean Strickland man I'm gonna go with Sean Strickland I was thinking about picking um Cesar Omeda as an underdog as a lock of the week I was thinking about that but the Lions like flip man so like you know guys you guys know I've been picking Cesar Omeda to win overall as an underdog and uh, he's not even an underdog anymore so I was like and uh, I don't really feel like every other favorite on the card that I'm confident in win is like way too wide i mean strickland is still better but i'm honest with 238 this guy's a former champion fought everyone their top top 10 pretty much um actually beat the guys that costa can't beat i mean he's been out there dominant is he all five rounds i mean this guy has crazy cardio crazy volume uh, pretty good durability i don't think his durability is bad i mean he's got um some of the best striking defense at middleweight so i'm i'm pretty confident strickland i think strickland is gonna go out there and get the job done now I'll, i'm gonna give you guys a prop to bet on last week i didn't give you guys a prop on the lock the week because the money line was only like minus, it was basically even money minus 135 so you guys can just bet that straight up but um here you gotta parlay this money line or you're gonna have to like take the strickland to win and over two and a half pounds minus 135 I really like this. I think I, I really like this. Um, Strickland to win in the over two and a half rounds. I think it's gonna go over two and a half rounds. Strickland's gonna win. Uh, he's gonna. Uh, he's probably gonna lose the first round. Maybe with the cost, I land some clips him a couple of times, land some big shots, and uh, maybe score some points and just score cards. Cause Costa, Costa comes out hot. He's like crazy in the first round. Goes absolutely balls to the wall. But um, I think as as the fight like starts slowing down, I feel like Strickland's gonna find his rhythm. He's gonna find his timing, and I think Strickland's gonna take over. So I'm gonna go with Strickland as a lock of the week. We're gonna we're gonna we're trying to make a six and one in the last seven lock of the weeks. We're five and one right on the last six lock of the week. The only lock we missed on was Nikola Moneyline. Every other lock we hit. The, every other lock. I mean, before that we hit um Ruffy by TKO at, at uh, UFC 301. We hit um we hit Lopez um Diego Lopez at minus 135. I mean against the DQ of UFC 300. So the paper with locks have been absolutely cash in every time. Let's see if we can hit um six. We can go six and one in the last seven lock of the week. So that's gonna be a lock of the week, uh, Strickland. So and I've been thinking about picking Strickland from like a week ago. So I, I feel pretty good about Strickland this week. I don't know. I don't really see anything with Paul Costa unless he lands like a big shot and puts uh, Strickland out cold. Um, he, even if he gets a knockdown, I don't think he's gonna be able to like just just. Maybe if you can hurt Strickland, I mean, can you can you get him out of there like with a big shot? I mean, Power Costa is a powerful dude, but I don't know. I don't really think his striking is as technical enough for him to like get the job done here. So I'm gonna go with Strickland for lock of the week, guys. That's gonna be your lock of the week, Strickland, Sean Strickland. I picked Duplicy to be Strickland. Uh, I picked Duplicy by KO. I bet Duplicy by money line. Obviously, you guys can go back and watch their best bets. I had Duplicy as the best bet over Strickland, even though a lot of people were picking Strickland. In that spot there, Duplicy was underdog there. I don't know. I just I just don't see it with Costa, man. I think Duplicy has a way better game than Costa. I mean, Duplicy can mix in takedowns. And he was out there mixing takedowns, which is why I picked Duplicy to win overall over Cyclin. And uh, Duplicy has more power, I feel like, also. He's got better, like, un more unorthodox striking, I feel like. The way he throws for th different angles. I mean, it's more like, it's unpredictable the way Duplicy throws. The way Costa throws, it's like... It's very predictable, I feel like. I feel like Strickland's going to see these, um, see Paul Acosta telegraphing those uh, left hook, right hook. I mean, it's going to see everything coming. As long as Strickland doesn't get lazy with striking defense, which you know, he normally doesn't get lazy with striking defense, I think he's going to win this fight. So Strickland is the lock of the week this week, guys. I'm going to give you guys a playable prop there. So you can win in over two and a half rounds. All right, guys, let's talk about the best bets now. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you guys uh, smash the like button. 
on this video help uh, help you boy with the YouTube algorithm and uh, let's get into it now guys so let's talk about the best bets and uh, best bet for uh, UFC 301 three or two I mean so even though I'm picking Ali Perez to win this fight I feel like this fight's gonna be a lot closer than the odds reflect the odds are like it was like minus 275 for um, for uh, Eileen Perez early in the week like last week but the lines have came down it's like minus 200 for um highly press now i think it makes sense i mean i think this fight's gonna be closer than the odds are reflecting i just don't see eileen press getting that grounded pounder uh, submission off like as that people thinks he might get that off um i think edward's gonna make this fight close i think it's gonna be 28 28 eileen press and um all edwards has to do to cast this bet is uh just win one round on like all three judges scorecards or even just even though right you're gonna catch this bet minus 160 for uh, edwards um i feel i feel like a striking is gonna be better than um highly impressed overall so i'm gonna go with the minus 160 for uh, edwards plus three and a half spread as the first bet best bet all right guys next best bet on the card is gonna be jayolton omeda uh to win by finish minus 135 Romanov, man, I don't know. I'm just not high on Romanov. Like he just, he's just kind of like a, he's like a poor man's Gazeev. I mean, he's probably better than Gazeev, though, to be fair. But I just don't think Gazeev. Like I just don't think um, Romanov's gonna have the gas tank or the cardio or the jiu-jitsu to really like capitalize if he gets a top position on a guy like Almeida. I think Almeida is gonna be the way better jiu-jitsu jiu practitioner. He's gonna get a submission. He's might, he might get a ground and pound TKO. I think he's way more athletic than Roman. I mean, has way better cardio. We actually seen Almeida go five rounds before, and uh, take care of a guy like um, 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 Derek Lewis is way more dangerous than Romanov. Like Romanov has no striking. I mean, this guy's striking fucking sucks. Like Derek Lewis, if you can go out there and like manhandle a guy like Derek Lewis, like we all give him shit because he couldn't finish Derek Lewis. I mean, so but we gotta we gotta look at it from his point of view, like. When you have a guy as dangerous as Derek Lewis in there with you, like who can knock you at any given point, you gotta you gotta you better hope you can hold the guy down. In this fight, I don't feel like he's gonna be too worried about a guy like Romanov on the feet, even on the ground. Like Romanov is like the only way Romanov is gonna win this fight if he gets top position and uh, Almeida can't can't kick this guy off him. I think Almeida's gonna have way better jiu-jitsu. He's gonna get the submission eventually, but we're gonna we're gonna go with the ITD just to be safe. He might get a grounded pound there. Because so I think Ramon, I'm just going to cover up. Um, we've seen we've seen Ramon I'm just quit out there against Volkov. I don't know. I'm just not high on Ramon. I think Almeida is going to be live for a finish in this fight. All right, guys. Next best bet on the card is going to be under two and a half rounds in that um, main event. I mean, I think this fight's going to end pretty in the first round. Um, I see it ending like in the late second round. I'm going to say like um, Makacha goes out there, probably gets a finish late second round. Might be even first round. We have seen Pori again knocked out in the first round before. I just I, I don't think this fight's gonna go past three rounds. I, I just think it's gonna end in the first like two and a half rounds. So minus 166 for under two and a half rounds. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, all right, guys, let's talk about the next best bet on the card. It's gonna be um, Kevin Holland, the troll trailblazer. He's gonna go out there and get a finish, man. Mikhail Lujicic fucking sucks. I don't know. I'm just not high on Mikhail Lujicic. I've, I've done pretty well picking both of their fights. I'm four and zero in picking Holland fights. I picked MVP as an as an underdog over Holland. I picked, um, who was the guy? I picked JDM. JDM was actually underdog early. I bet him my month plus 105. If you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, you guys know how high I was in JDM. I was like telling you guys to go max bet JDM. But Kevin Holland actually made that fight competitive, more competitive than I thought it was going to be. So I don't know. Like I think Kevin Holland is underrated. So I think people kind of sleep on his skill set a bit. He's like almost 3 to 1 here, like minus 300, almost like minus 285. The line's actually gotten wider. Um, I think it makes sense, man. And he's actually like out there being competitive with these guys. Like the only fight where he wasn't competitive was the uh, MVP fight, because MVP has that uh, karate stance, blitz in, blitzing in and out of range, and it's just hard to um, predict uh, what MVP's, MVP's gonna throw at you next. We know how good MVP is. I mean, we picked MVP to beat Holland there as a dog. We bet him by this as an also on the live stream. Yeah. Um, I think Holland's gonna bounce back, man. I know he's on, he's on a he last two of his last two fights. I mean, he's like two and four his last six fights. But look at the guys he's he's out there fight, uh, fighting. I mean, he's fighting way better guys than Mikol. Mikol's best guy. Mikol's probably fought is Kyra Brahalio and um, Michelle Pereira. But even in that Chidi fight, I mean, he was getting his ass kicked early by Chidi, and Chidi just has no game plan, no backup plan when he's getting hurt. 
I think Haaland can grab ball. He can lock him, lock him in submission. I think Haaland's gonna be like for a submission club and sub. The submission is actually plus two fifty. I think that's not bad. If you want to sprinkle something on uh, Kevin Haaland, I think submission is gonna be like. Low. You can go Haaland by uh, round one, round two finish. He, he might get a round three finish because he has gotten round three finishes before he knocked out Santiago Ponchanibio in the third round. I think Mikhail Zizic is going to slow it down and I think Kevin Holland is going to finish him by probably by TKO or like submission. So we're going to go with Kevin Holland by finish and minus 1 to 5 as the last best bet on the card. Alright guys, let's talk about the prop of the week. Now this is a long shot prop of the week. There's a reason this is like plus 300. I think half is, is going to be live for a grounded pound finish. He might get a submission and like I could see like submission too but I think submission is going to be not that easy because um, Mickey Gill has a uh, decent Jiu Jitsu. But I'm hoping he goes out there and knocks out uh, Mickey Go in the first like two rounds. I think half is gonna. I think he's gonna win. I got him in a parlay. I think he's gonna win for sure. The line's actually gotten way wider. I was expecting the line to bounce back just a bit. Um, I got him at minus two seventy five early. Like it wasn't like crazy good line. I mean, you could have got him even better line than that. Um, but yeah, I think half is gonna win for sure, man. His his line, money line's like minus three three eighty. You know, like I can't give you guys as a best bet. It's like too obvious at this point. But uh, I think half is by TKO as a prop of the week. This is like a prop of the week is always like long shot plus money prop of the week, which I feel like can can happen. So I feel like this we could see this we could see half is uh, getting on top ish, you know, on Mickey Gell, maybe rocking him on the feet and then grounding and pounding him, getting him out of there. Um, his striking looked really good in that JDM fight. I mean, if you're if you're out there like being able to hang with JDM on the feet, I mean, I think your striking is gonna be good enough to knock out a guy like uh, Mickey Gell. He might get a submission though, so if you want to play a save, you can go with the ITD for half is, which is like plus one ten. But I'm gonna, we're gonna take, we're gonna roll the dice and half is by TKO plus three hundred. I like that number a lot. So guys, those are the best bets. Hope you guys enjoy the enjoy the best best video on the lock of the week. Let me know what you guys think about the lock of the week this week. We're trying to make it. Um, we're trying to make it four in a row. We hit the last three lock of the week. We hit a roughly by TKO. We hit um, um, who was the other one? Um, we hit the Grimbo money line. We hit um. Um, uh, Woodson, yeah, Woodson by the system. We hit like the last three lock of the week. Let's see if we can hit um and the fourth one in uh, four in a row. So like um, you guys like the video. Um, subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, let me give some shout out to the members, man. I want to give some shout out to the members, people that support the channel all the time. If you guys want to support this channel, just become a member. It's only like four ninety nine a month. It's not necessary, but um, it does help the channel. Um. If you want to support the channel, so uh, shout out to shout out to Nate Brown also being the first member on the channel. By the way, big shout out to Angela Rosendale. Shout out to uh, Five Ram. Make sure you guys go check out Five Ram, man. Me and him, me and him are gonna do a uh, live live stream later this week for this card. We'll give you guys our final bets, final picks, final parlays and stuff on this card. So make sure you guys come hang out with us probably Sat Friday Friday or Saturday. Shout out to Ernesto, Perfecto, uh, Boss Gags, Big G, Greg Durham, uh, Ben Garcia, Andrew Hawley. Shout out to Master, Mr. Maxim, Dean C, CCYT, Bu Saberor. So sh shout out to all the people, man, everyone that's supporting the channel, everyone that watches these videos. I appreciate you guys. Well, shout out to everyone that um, um, helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Like the video, guys. Make sure you guys like this video. If you guys if you guys don't like this video, I mean, it is what it is. If you guys don't like agree with my bad, still like the video. I mean. Or if you guys like the content. I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Take it easy, guys. Best of luck and all your bets. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.